Less talk, less keynote. Um, it's going to be a light one. I wanted to give everyone kind of a view. I know we've been talking about tools and platforms and all that. I wanted to talk a little bit about models and, of course, Llama. And uh, can anyone kind of see the Easter egg in the image? OK, cool. All right, my designer did her job. She, uh, she created that. And I'm told there's going to be a little bit of a surprise during this talk, so you got to pay attention. Um, awesome. All right, um, a little bit of a history lesson before we jump into the model. Um, this is, and I know this, this crowd is, knows all this stuff, but I thought it'd be fun to kind of rehash a little bit of it. So I got into the deep learning space around, you know, kind of after the ImageNet, just after the ImageNet um, you know, kind of revolution when supervised learning hit. Does everyone know ImageNet? I mean, obviously, come on. Hopefully, I actually gave this like part of this talk uh, a couple weeks back, and like everyone was like, "What is ImageNet?" So I had to use the hot dog, not hot dog uh, meme, which hopefully everyone knows that one too. So we had this world of supervised learning uh, that, that kind of persisted for a while, and it was on Cafe and Torch and Theano, and of course TensorFlow and other other frameworks, and of course PyTorch. Um, and then in 2018, you know, we we kind of woke up to the the transformer. I don't think we quite knew at the time. What, what we had really discovered and Noam Shazir and the team over at Google um, really created there, but this transformer model plus un, you know, un, unlabeled data and unsupervised pre-training um, plus fine tuning uh, changed the game completely, even though it was really, really expensive to deploy. Um, and if you fast forward to 2022, you get basically that paradigm plus RLHF, which is now kind of brings us to you know, things like ChatGPT and assistance and a lot of what we're, we're seeing today. Um, and then if you bring that even further where, where we are today in, in 2023 here and you know, adding retrieval augmented generation um, and doing fuzzy matches in, in kind of vector embedding space, um, plus adding search and all these things, the model has kind of become the platform. And that's really the point of this whole talk is, you know, we are actually abstracting things to the level where the model actually allows us to reach a new level of developers. Not everyone needs to know PyTorch, which is a bit sad for me personally and a lot of others, um, but, but you know, models have become kind of a new uh, unit of, of kind of computing and, and development. And so, you know, dovetailing into Llama, so I think everyone hopefully has heard of Llama by now. Um, super cool project, but it, the beginnings are actually kind of interesting. So the team in Paris, which was, if you were in FAIR, uh, we had a team working on formal mathematics. And so basically how you prove uh, theorems using things like tree search and, and LLMs. Uh, and in their spare time, so this was you know, Guillaume uh, Lempel and Tim Lacroix and, and Marianne and, and some folks mainly out of Paris, uh, they would kind of steal some compute on the side and you know, figure out how they can you know, kind of scrappily train something using essentially chinchilla scaling laws. Uh, and that's really where uh, Llama 1 was born. And it was licensed in, you know, with a research license. It was non-commercial. Um, but it, it was pretty amazing what happened next. You saw you know, Stanford with Alpaca, a couple of days you had an instruction tuned version of it, and it started to kind of catch fire. Um, in July this year, which is kind of hard to believe, it's, it's only a couple months ago, or three or four months ago, uh, Llama 2 is released, uh, it has 7B, a 13B, and a 70B uh, billion parameter uh, version, so kind of a wide uh, distribution of compute envelopes. Uh, we then created a code Llama version, which is basically taking Llama 2 and further fine tuning it and release different checkpoints along those, um, I think it was a 34B, a 7, and a 13. And this basically was state of the art in uh, coding, but also like talking about codes. So you could actually converse with you know, code Llama and ask it about your code and ask it to code for you. Um, so that's, that's kind of where like a little bit of a short history lesson uh, of Llama. Um, you know, if you look at the impact from Llama 2 and, and these models to date, it's really, I would say, hit on a number of different axes. One is, is community. There's just this really amazing community and rich community that's formed around Llama. Uh, number two, the tools. If you look on you know, GitHub, and I'll talk more about you know, GitHub and some of these stats in just a minute, uh, but like tools and evals and everything's kind of being built around Llama as, as kind of a center of mass, which is really interesting. Uh, the research community, some of it for better or for worse, um, is using Llama. They discover things about models, uh, you know, in terms of bias or ways to prompt models that jailbreak them. And, and that's actually a good thing because we want to understand, you know, how to improve from a safety perspective or, you know, how we can deploy these things uh, in a more responsible way. And we need people, a lot more people, uh, to be banging on our models um, in order to find that stuff out. And then in enterprise, we're actually really surprised how quickly the enterprise space 
has adopted open models. I mean, of course, open source is one thing. I mean, they're adopting PyTorch, as you saw from the previous talks. Uh, but we were just, I would say, just taken aback at how quickly, you know, a couple weeks ago we, we announced Shopify, uh, Orange, uh, Reliance Geo, and, and many others. And, you know, some of our cloud, cloud provider friends like AWS and Google uh, have seen, you know, something on the order of 3,500 or, you know, more enterprises uh, starting projects based on Llama 2. So you're starting to see really this, you know, the full stack becoming really open. Um, and that's really cool because you, then you can take these models, you can deploy them on device, you can deploy them, um, you know, in, in Edge. Um, you know, we, we announced a partnership with Cloudflare. You can imagine basically doing inference within the CDN because they're deploying GPUs um, in the CDN network. That's pretty cool. Uh, there's a lot of implications to that, which are actually pretty interesting. Um, so this community is actually uh, really cool. Um, so by the numbers, uh, and by the way, these numbers keep changing. I keep having to update them almost every day. This actually, this is more like 9,400 now. Uh, so basically, people have taken our Llama models and created over 9,400 derivative versions. Uh, so this is, you know, things like different languages. Uh, this could be improvements in helpfulness or, you know, uh, you know, different ways to kind of improve. And then they will redeploy them and put, put them on Huggy Face and people can download them and use them. This number also keeps changing. I can't keep up with it. Uh, I keep working with Omar at Hugging Face and keep banging on the, uh, the Hugging Face APIs. Uh, it's actually closer to 32 million in the last 30, 30 days of downloads of, of uh, Llama models. Uh, in this, every day I look at it, it's, it's even higher, which is pretty crazy. Uh, there's over, also over 8,000 projects um, on GitHub uh, that use or, or reference Llama. You can see some of them here. Uh, I think I, I put on LinkedIn uh, like last month around the Tiny Llama project, which I think is really cool. Uh, there's the Alpaca project, obviously. There's uh, um, actually a, a, the Llama 2C, uh, GGML, uh, if you're familiar with GGML, uh, Lava, Llama Sharp, and the C Sharp um, world. Yarn is kind of a cool project. It extends the context length uh, to over 100K versus kind of the native support of 4K uh, that we have. And of course, Long Llama, or as we call it, or long, longer context length Llama is on the way and being developed, or has been developed. So lots going on in GitHub. Um, and this is actually kind of a cool chart. Uh, so what I did here, and these numbers have actually even gone up a little bit higher. Uh, if you look at the Open LLM leaderboard, has anybody, I assume, gone to the Open LLM leaderboard? It's pretty cool to, okay, no one goes to Open LLM leaderboard? Okay, how do you get your models in? Um, so this is basically a leaderboard for LLMs uh, that shows you basically how well your model performs uh, across these different kind of de facto benchmarks, right? Uh, Hello Swag is, is, is like a, you know, kind of common sense reasoning benchmark. Truthful Q&A is something for like uh, mimicking uh, human falsehoods. Um, so it kind of gives you an idea of how your models perform in, in these different benchmarks. None of them are perfect. You, you kind of, you know, triangulate how well your model is doing based on these. And then of course you look at the actual helpfulness and usefulness in an application, it kind of gives you an idea. You can see though, uh, in blue is kind of the baseline from when we released our models uh, back in mid-July. And you can see in green, you know, kind of how the community has, you know, taken our models, improved on them, and then re-uploaded them. And you can see them continually track up the leaderboard. And you can see across the board, the, the community has come to the rescue and improved nearly 10% on average. And so just to give you kind of a little bit of a logo soup, uh, we've actually seen, you know, uh, engagement and partnerships basically across every layer of the stack. You know, down from the, the hardware layer uh, where we have, uh, you know, hardware platforms like AMD and Qualcomm and NVIDIA, MediaTek, Intel, all, you know, optimizing and building on, on Llama. And so this is really like a full stack because you have PyTorch and you have, you know, Llama as, as the model. Um, and what this does is actually helps to drive down the cost of inference, uh, the cost of fine tuning, the cost of deploying these models at scale across all these different hardwares. You know, we're very much uh, hopeful that we can have Llama everywhere on, on different devices and very kind of low resor resource environments. Um, at the platform layer, tons of logos here. You can see uh, we work with Google, Azure, and Amazon, of course, at the cloud level, but lots of great startups like Hugging Face, Snorkel, Together, and a bunch of others. Um, and this, this really allows us to proliferate, you know, Llama in kind of all levels of abstraction um, and kind of any way you really want to use it. And then, as I mentioned, uh, at the enterprise level, we're actually seeing, I would say, really in incredible like you know usage. Um, and uh, so we do work with some of these companies, uh, you know, pairwise, uh, and help them. Some of them just take Llama and they build stuff and they tell us about it, and uh, we help amplify their work. Um, so it's a really cool community. 
So where does the future kind of take us? Um, sadly, I can't disclose what Llama 3 is yet. Um, soon, hopefully. Um, but certainly new modalities uh, will come into play. So I, th I think the world isn't a language to language world, right? We're not, we don't live in text. Um, we live in, in you know, uh, audio and video and, um, and we look at images, we generate images. So you can imagine where, where all that all takes, takes you and takes us. Um, safety and responsibility, I think, is something that we've in the past talked a lot about. Uh, responsible AI was, you know, kind of used a lot, and, and we we kind of gave it some, you know, uh, focus, but not enough. But generative AI has really made safety and responsibility such an important aspect. Um, and so I'm looking at all ways um, to invest in this. I have, you know, very close partnerships um, with our responsible AI team at Meta, and of course we're working with the community and building partnerships externally. And then just generally, I think if you you look at you know when we built and, and we have continued to build the PyTorch uh, ecosystem and community. It is all about the community. It is all about giving people the voice and agency and being able to to elevate the work they've done and and just be part of something. And that's what we're hoping that Llama can also become. And obviously, the fact that it's built on PyTorch is amazing, and that we have the teams together here at Meta um, makes it all more powerful. So I will stop there. Um, if you have any questions or you want to chat offline, I'm happy. Happy to chat. We are actually on break now, so hopefully everyone can grab a coffee, relax. I think we're actually ahead of schedule. Um, so hopefully everyone's enjoyed the keynotes. Give everyone a round of applause for the speakers.